Hi everyone, Dr. Remy from Pain Free and Fit and Posture Size. Today we've got a great yoga pose, the warrior pose, that can help with your spondylolisthesis pains. Hope you enjoy it. So what I like about teaching my patients and students with spondylolisthesis about the warrior pose is that it targets multiple factors all in one that usually are contributing to spondylolisthesis pain. If you've taken any of our other videos to heart and learn from our pain-free and fit system on our channel here, what we talk about is many times in spondylolisthesis, the anterior pelvic posture exists where the pubic bone is lower than the tailbone. Normally they should be level, but when that pubic bone goes lower than your tailbone, it increases the arch in your lower back it jams down or compresses the joints or the posterior disc fibers, many times entrapping the synovium, which is the inside lining of those joints, and many times creates a lot of that spondylolisthesis lower back pain. So we've talked about in other videos the importance of not only training the abdominals, but the oblique muscles in their normal function, the longissimus iliocostalis muscles to exert a backwards pressure on that vertebra, the multifidus muscles, which are key in stabilizing the spine, but the warrior pose takes a lot of those and mixes them together into one great challenge. What the warrior pose is, is we're basically gonna start with a straightforward foot position where the feet are situated directly underneath the center of my thighs, and we're going to position one leg forward and one leg back, keeping that same width between our two. And we're just gonna bend our knees and come down into a lunge position. Now that lunge position, remember, as we get into it, the front side will inadvertently want to hike up or a hip hike on that side. And that will cause compression in your lower back, the joints and the disc fibers on one side and overstretching on another. Complicating that mistake is usually most people lean their rib cage in on that side also slightly. So you want to make sure that on that front leg, we have a pressure to hold that hip down so it stays level with the other. We're going to swing it down a little bit and a little different pressure to lift the rib cage up so it stays level, avoiding that tendency to both hip hike and torso side lean. If you have a natural tendency, let's say, to externally rotate your leg or cross one leg over another, this is a common tendency that causes hip hiking and torso side leaning more on one side than another, you'll want to emphasize that side correction. Not sure if that's you, go to either the Pain Free or Fit or Posture Size websites, take our free body analysis and learn about your unique mechanics and postural instabilities because they definitely play a role in and you need to know about those doing any type of therapeutic healing exercise. Otherwise, you're only gonna be strengthening the dysfunction of your body and not the proper function. So getting back to our warrior, we have that stance where our feet are apart, centered under the midline of both thighs. We're keeping lead hip down, lead rib up. We're keeping a little bit of tail under or pubic bone tension to decrease that arch in the back. And as we raise our arms up, the natural tendency is to lean backwards or increase that arch. So we need to counter that with some abdominal tension or abdominal contraction downwards as if we're trying to do a crunch. Our front ribs are crunching down to our pubic bone. And that's going to help us avoid the typical tendency as the arms come up to overarch that lower back. So as we do this, what I'm doing now is I'm getting multiple benefits. I'm recruiting the abdominals, which are usually weak, from both ends, both the tail under or pubic bone up tension, which is essential for most people with spondylolisthesis. I'm checking the upper abdomen area in terms of crunching down to prevent an overarching of my lower back. I'm stretching the latissimus muscles, which many times are tight in spondylolisthesis, which run from the shoulder to the lower back as my arms elevate. And I'm resisting their tendency to overarch the back by keeping that tail under and crunch down whole with my abs. I'm also getting the beneficial effect of stretching hip flexor muscles. There's a whole bunch of them that are being stretched because that leg is behind my, the midline of my body. And many times with spondylolisthesis, that leg being forward has a tendency to contract or tighten those hip flexors. So I'm getting hip flexor stretching, glute recruitment, hip recruitment, the glute medius, so I'm not hip hiking. I'm getting lower back stability, lat stretching, abdominal tension all in one, and I'm just gonna hold that for whatever I can, making sure I maintain my neutral spine position. Again, neutral spine is setting your spine in that unique position based on your posture and mechanics so that the less or the least amount of stress is imparted to it. I may have a problem with gravitational balance, so I can do this with a little bit of hold on if I need to. 
So that balances me if I'm a beginner. I'll then switch legs, go to the opposite way, making sure I finish with the leg that has a tendency to flex forward more. If I have a tendency to, let's say, externally rotate that leg or cross it during the day, that's the leg that I want to end with being back because that's going to be the side of the greater hip flexor tightness and that leaves my body in a more corrected state after I do my therapeutic or healing exercises as opposed to a tight or dysfunctional state. You can work on warrior poses holding everywhere from five seconds up to several minutes in each position. You want to hold it until you feel a total stretch out of whatever's tight. You feel your hip flexors tight, you want to make sure you're holding it long enough so that that stretch passes. If you're feeling your lower back muscles, the erector spine, and both sides of your spine tighten, you want to hold it until that is stretched out. And as you build up time, several times a week, you can do this three, four times a week, preferably every other day to build up progressive time and strength, you're going to notice that you're going to become more flexible where your hip flexors are not as tight. You're going to have greater abdominal control to prevent that excessive arching in your back. And you're going to have looser lat muscles, which many times as we're reaching up for things or training in the gym with overhead presses, pull downs, that tension is aggravating spondylolisthesis pain. So you're getting multiple benefits by integrating multiple body regions into one exercise, which is the Yoga Warrior Phase 1 exercise. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to help me share this critical information with others, give me a thumbs up below. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. I'll do my best to get back to you. They often see our next idea for our next video. And if you want more exercises for spondylolisthesis, lower back pain, please subscribe to our channel. We've got lots of great information there, as well as on the Pain Free and Fit website, including our new exercise program, the Fast Track Healing Exercise Program for Spondylolisthesis. Hope this warrior pose exercise helps you and your spondylolisthesis pain.